All right, let's get this uh, magnetic force party started. The statement reads, uh, for part A, find the force on a square loop placed as shown in figure A near an infinite straight wire. Both the loop and the wire carry a steady current I. B, find the force on a triangular loop in figure B. A review of the uh, figure in question shows that for part A, we have an infinite wire on the bottom and separated by distance S is the square loop, both carrying current I. For figure B, we have the same scenario except the triangular loop of side length A, all again with both current I separated by distance S. Uh, things to know for this problem, the field of a line, clearly, and then we have segments of lines that we can chop this up into, and the force, or at least the magnitude. Um, the force is equal to the current times the integral of the cross product of the differential line element with the magnetic field. Before we get started with any analytic solution, let's first draw out the uh, scenario with the square loop and the magnetic field coming from the loop and then the line. Um, you'll see in this diagram I made, I kind of color coordinated things to make it easier. We know that the separation distance from the bottom part of the loop is S and then the top part of the loop is S plus A because the length is A. Um, Let's also note that in the blue case, that uh, zero, run, zero to A runs from left to right following the current. So we're going to keep that same um, attitude when approaching the top loop, A, uh, zero to A, um, in the same consistency. Um, and then if we look, we know that from the right hand rule, the current on the top part of the loop runs into the page as denoted by the purple x's and the uh, uh, magnetic field from the bottom current is coming out of the page with respect to that bottom wire on um, that bottom wire itself pointing in the right direction uh leads to a magnetic field coming um out of the page onto the loop itself and so that just helps us with our directionality which we'll need in the cross product results itself all right, so for the analytic part of the solution, uh, for this first scenario A, the force on the vertical components cancel, which is why I didn't draw anything on the diagram. Um, again, that's just a symmetry argument. You can use that just like we did in electrostatics. The bottom line segment has a magnitude of the force bottom is equal to I, integrated from zero to A, because that's the length of the loop, um, of DL cross B. We know that uh, since we have a cross product, we need to take into account just the directions, which is why we drew the diagram to help you identify them. And uh, we see that we have the magnitude of the magnetic field that comes out of the cross product and the magnitude of the um, differential line element, DL. But we know that DL is running from uh, right to left, so that arrow points left, and the magnetic field is pointing out of the page. So left times out, again, according to the right-hand rule, leads us to a direction of up. And that's how we get the up arrow in the integral. And then the integral is just of the line segment. So we know that that's A minus zero, which is A. So that's how we get this uh, force bottom is equal to mu naught I squared, because we have the I from the B field and the I from the uh, force formula. Um, times a all over 2 pi s since that's our separation distance with the up arrow if we do that same argument for the top segment we have that uh we have the down arrow or the line segment running from right to left leaving us with the uh left arrow and then we have that the field goes uh into the page so again, according to the right-hand rule, that would result in a downward-facing arrow. That's what we see here. The only difference is that instead of uh, S in the denominator, we have S plus A due to the increase of height due to the uh, square length itself. But we know from superposition that the force is equal to the, the net force is the vector sum. And so we can just add them together. And that's what we do here. So... Uh, we're going to have to figure out a way to simplify 
in a manner that encapsulates the proper direction of this or the proposed direction. We don't know the field strength, things of that nature. But based on this geometry, uh, we can f we know that we can factor out a, a mu naught i squared over it times a over two pi, leaving us with one over s in the up direction plus a one over s plus a in the down direction. If you see my little note below, we know that s is less than s plus a, and both of these things are real values that are positive since they're distances. So if we take their inverse, then the magnet then the uh, greater than sign flips and we know that 1 over s is greater than 1 over s plus a. That tells us that the magnitude of the force pointing up is greater than the magnitude of the force pointing down. So our net result should be pointing up. So I go ahead and flip the sign on the uh, second fraction to a minus sign, but I also flip the direction to up. So doing that allows us to combine these things with keeping the directionality consistent. Uh, so we find a common denominator in the next step. Uh, the s's cancel, leaving us with the factor of a in the numerator. And that's how we get mu naught i squared a squared over 2 pi s times s plus a pointing in the up direction. Similarly, we'll have to take this approach and apply it to the configuration in b. So let's look at that. Um, with this being a triangle, the symmetry only works in one place. We draw on the bottom part of the triangle, the bottom leg, a vertical um, up at a divided by two, and we see that we have a mirror image. That only happens vertically. Horizontally, if we did that, we would not have a mirror image. So we're gonna have to take that into account. Uh, we see that we're gonna have a uh, recurring relationship here with the uh, s over square root three, because that's just an intrinsic property of the ratios of the triangle, it being an equilateral triangle, each uh, angle measures 60 degrees. And if we take the tangent of 60 degrees, that leads us with this thing. Um, and we'll, I'll dive into the analytics of that, but I just want to show you that the separation distance S leads a direction to the uh, end of the um, triangle of S over square root 3 given that this is our coordinate system. Uh, so in words, the bottom segment is the same as part A, nothing new there. The two, side, the two sides that are at an angle require more work. The geometry has a symmetry about the vertical center of the loop, which I just described about A equal two, but not horizontally. So we'll need to split this up and find the proper domains for the integral that we just had in the last part and the diagram shows that tangent of theta is equal to s over x. Solving for x leads us with this. You will see this again in a couple spots. But that's important so we know where to integrate from, to and from, with respect to uh, the x direction. All right, so on the left side, we know that the b of that line is just mu naught i 2 pi y in the z hat direction. We haven't defined what y is in this case, so we'll save that for later. Uh, but we can take care of the cross product. We should know the directions now. Uh, with dl going in all three coordinate directions, since we set up a coordinate there, we know that uh, in the b field occurring only in the z direction, that the cross product is pretty simple. All we get is b dy x hat minus b dx y hat, because everything else is zero, and a cancellation happens. Again, we can factor the magnitude of y out, leaving us with mu naught i squared over 2 pi y um, times dy x hat minus dx y hat. But again, since our geometry tells us that we have a symmetry about the vertical line or vertical center, uh, we know that the x directions cancel so that dy term is um, not something we need to worry about when integrating. As we saw how we set up the triangle in the diagram, we can apply that same argument for what y equals, which is the square root three times x, again, from tangent of 60 degrees. Putting this all together now, the force of the left and the right sides is thus four sides equals two, since there's two sides. Notice that our left point of the triangle in the x direct, in the dx um, direction, or not even dx direction, but the dx length, starts at s over square root three, because we don't know where in space it is, so we just take s and put it at that coordinate point. 
And then uh, we know that we have to add all the way up. Since we're doubling it, we're only going to the midpoint of the triangle, which is uh, S over square root 3 plus A over 2. So thank you, symmetry, for that. Uh, but again, we see here that we're just taking the uh, magnetic field magnitude mu naught I squared over 2 pi square root 3 X times the results of that cross product cancellation terms of the uh, X hat direction. And that this leaves us with negative dx y hat. Uh, so pretty much everything except the 1 over x is a constant. So we kick it out to the left. The negative 2 uh, for the direction and the two sides. And then we have 1 over x dx in the y hat direction. Uh, that's a simple ln integral. Again, since all these are real and positive, we don't need to worry about the absolute value here. Um, again, this substitute in after evaluate it um uh, notice that with the rule of logs the minus sign allows us to divide it and if we split up the fraction that gives us s over square root three uh, over s square root three plus a over two divided by s square root three so the first term in that separation goes to one which is what we see here and then if we're it, whenever anytime you're dividing by a fraction you multiply by the reciprocal and that's how we get the square root in the numerator and the uh, 2 in the denominator with the s, again, all in the y direction. Since this is a vector sum, and we're pointing upwards with both of these results, um, we just add them together. Uh, they both have a common factor of mu naught i squared uh, divided by 2 pi. Uh, from the bottom segment, that just leads an inside factor of a over s. And then we have uh, two copies of... 1 over square root 3, ln 1 plus root 3a over 2s, again, all in the up direction.